tennis elbow is a, is a very common uh, thing that can cause pain of the elbow. It causes pain on the outside part of the elbow. And, and when people have pain, it's whenever they have resistance to extending the wrist, okay? When is that most common? Is if you go to lift a briefcase or a bag of groceries or a heavy purse, okay? It doesn't always occur when you play tennis. When you play tennis, if you hit a backhand and you're swinging through, then you're putting a lot of strain and extending the wrist when you do that, and it causes this chronic pull of the muscle and the tendon off of the bone on the outside part of the elbow. So when that occurs, it actually does not lead to a lot of inflammation. It leads to a microtrauma. And so the tendon is almost like it's trying to peel itself away from where the bone is. And then it leads to pain because you have these little microtrauma uh, that leads to areas of dead or necrotic tissue within the tendon. And that's what causes the, the persistent pain. Causes a tennis elbow largely or overuse uh, and doing a specific activity over and over and over again. And so that repetitive action, uh, which is usually something to where there's a, a resistance whenever you pull your wrist back, whether you're lifting and maybe you're working in a factory and you're constantly lifting and pulling things, uh, or if you're doing it recreationally, playing golf or tennis and those type of things, um, any of those repetitive actions can then lead to this trauma on, on a, a microscopic level within the tendon. To treat it largely initially as modifying activities, you got to prevent doing palm down lifting and then you got to stretch it on a daily basis so a lot of the things you do you're going to be holding the elbow out straight and you're going to be stretching your wrist down and doing the same thing palm up and stretching your wrist up and by doing that you're going to be trying to elongate that tendon because it's tightening up and then you got to work on building the strength uh, to, to recover it there are other things you can do with physical therapy and injections that can help with the treatment of that the other is get a strap that has a, a thing to put right in the mid portion of where that is, because what it acts as a counter force, because right now everything you do is pulling directly off the bone right there. So if you add a pad or a strap right here that has a, a ball right there, you can get one of Walgreens or they have them here. What it does is it redistributes the forces. So as you're doing and squeezing things, it'll, it'll pull here more than it does right there. The vast majority of people with tennis elbow can be treated non-surgically without a surgery. There are a handful of patients that it just becomes a chronic issue up and down over time, and then there are different surgeries you can do to re-anchor that tissue back down to the bone. It can take several months sometimes for it to get better. It really just comes down to, uh, to how effective you can be at modifying your activities and then giving it the appropriate time uh, for it to get better. Other adjuncts that you can do, like an injection, that can help from a pain standpoint so that you can eliminate the pain quicker, but as far as stretching it out and building the strength up, that can take uh, weeks to months for it to improve. The most successful long-term treatment is really physical therapy because it's, it's giving you that time to rest it, let things heal. There are some modalities that therapy has that can, can help with the healing process, but it's stretching and then eventual strengthening of it. So you got to reset, stretch it out, and then build the strength up again. It doesn't happen overnight, so a lot of people will want to get a cortisone shot because it makes it feel better, but really the long-term uh, treatment is gonna be ther therapeutic exercise to make it better. If somebody fails uh, non-surgical management and they continue to have pain, then there is a surgery. And basically what you have to do is you have to clean out those areas that have those dead or necrotic fibers of the tendon, and then you either do or don't anchor it back down to the bone. I prefer to anchor that tissue then back down to the bone, and it takes time for it to heal. Okay, it's an outpatient procedure. Uh, it's not a very long downtime. Um, we get you your range of motion going pretty much within a week of the surgery, and uh, and then we start doing progressive in increase in activity after about six weeks, so that from six to 12 weeks, you're building the activity to where your activity is tolerated after three months.